I want to welcome you all uh, to our course, which is uh, computer and com uh, communication skills. Okay. And then I'm sure you all went through the outline of the module okay, that we're going to be using throughout our course. Okay. This one is computers and communication studies, actually. So not communication skills. You have to rephrase that. So of course, you went through the overview of the course and the prerequisites that you need to attain before attending this course, which I believe you understood and read through. For any questions based on that, we're going to later on, you can inquire with the help of uh, the group that has been provided. Uh, uh, and then the, some of the topics that we're going to cover in this course, of course, we're going to look at uh, key things. Uh, first of all, introduction to computers. We need to begin to understand what computers are, are okay? Which I also believe that at your own free time and uh, in other courses as well, we, before coming to attend to this particular program, you have done basics of, of computers. In short, we're calling this as introduction to, com to, to computers and importance of computer literacy. And then the other thing that we're going to look at in unit two, we're going to look at what computers are, what computers are. So look at what a computer is, different types of computers, um, and what is the general concept of computers in short. So we're looking at hardware and software working together, okay? And then in three, of course, we're going to look at basic operations of computers, okay? We'll look at how each of the key major components or devices in a computer system work. Keyboards, mouse, the hard drives, okay? We should be able to understand all that, all right? And then uh, we may also look at application packages, specifically uh, the MS Office. MS Office, how word processing works, uh, PowerPoints, and so on and so forth. This will be a little bit of practical, okay? Application packages will be practical so that we get to understand, just to enhance the skills that we have already, okay? Now, uh, on, a, on the portal, I shared um, a PPT, which I believe you all have, lecture on of that PPT, so what we're going to cover today. So we're going to look at something known as computer literacy. In there, we we'll define key things that we need to understand what a computer is. And in that PowerPoint, I did breakdowns of what we should be able to achieve in there. So quickly, let's dive in into the PPT and then see what we have. Are you all able to see the PPT shared? Great. So we we'll define a computer system. Yes. We we'll define a computer system to be any electronic device that accepts data, stores that data, processes that data, and then outputs information. So basically, a computer system is an electronic device that is able to convert data into meaningful information. Are we together? Now, the concepts of a computer system are that it has to, first of all, input the data, which is accepting, and then manipulate that data okay which is converting of that raw information into meaningful information and then produce information that is concrete that can enable you as an end user you and me to make decisions at the end of the day based on the information that it has put it okay now if you observe the definition of what a computer system is it's basically defining to say 
there are key areas of what a computer does. I mean, the key components that it utilizes by definition. Inputting of data, manipulating, which is by using the processor, and then storing of data, and then outputting of data. Now, this is a system, so it simply means that it does not really work independently on its own. It needs subsystems for it to work. Are we together? Now, these subsystems, they come from the definition itself. So a computer system is made up of input devices, devices that allow the computer system to grab data, okay, or to accept data. And then also the computer system is made up of storage devices. Now, devices that allow it to store data for a certain purpose, okay? And then also the computer system is made up of what we call processing devices. There is not only one device that processes, but there are multiple devices that do the processing. So it's also made up of processing devices. And then the computer system is also made up of what we call output devices. So there are so many of those output devices that are there. We'll discover you know, as we go further. So these are some of the devices that the computer system comprises. If you can see there, you can see something that is an output device like a printer, monitor, speakers, all these, they produce the resultant of what a computer system has processed, okay? And then the other thing that we can see there, we can see something referred to as a system unit, okay? This particular component here, the system unit. Now the system unit is basically a box, okay? Or a casing that contains different components within itself. Now, some of us refer this system unit to be a CPU, okay? But we are wrong, right? It's not a CPU. This box is not a CPU. Okay, but it contains components where we found the CPU in. Okay, so we, if you can see from the PPT there, we have system unit inside there, there's a processor, memory, uh, storage devices like CD ROM, floppy drives, hard drives, all sorts of things are found within this, mounted within this CPU, with this system unit. And then we can also see an example of input devices there with the scanner. Uh, we've got the keyboard, we've got the mouse, okay? And so many more that we're going to discuss. Now, the wet computer system comes in when all these components, input, process, and output devices are variable. If they are not a variable, we cannot have a computer system. Are we together? If we remove a keyboard out of there, we remove a mouse out of there, we're not going to have a computer system. Okay, unless all these things are present, then it's defined to be a computer system. What does a computer do? With the help of all those subsystems, what does it do in general? Computer system, they perform general operations. Okay, they perform, it's, it actually performs general operations on data that has been inserted into a computer system, okay? Through the microprocessor. Now the microprocessor is a guy that is going to basically work on the data, manipulate the data that is inserted in a computer system, okay? And for these particular operations to be performed, which is input number one, there has to be a present of an end user, you and me, just like we are doing with our mobile phones, our laptops that we have there, we are basically finding a situation of whereby in order for us to open up Zoom, we need to click somewhere. Are we together? We need to click somewhere. That is an, an input operation. So we sent an instruction into a computer system, hence it was performed for us to see the resultant, which is what we are seeing on the screen now. But for it to be performed, a process of happened. A process, a process, a process. A process.
So we're saying the computer system will, ma will manipulate the data that will be inputted by the input devices that you observed, which is another operation that is performed by, uh, by the computer system with the help of who? the CPU, okay? And then another operation that will be conducted there is the output of data. Of course, from this stage, we have skipped in a storage because the storage is more important because it will keep whatever data that is supposed to be processed that is coming in and going out of the computer system. So we we'll identify the storage devices responsible for that. So after the data has been processed, it has to be uh, displayed or it has to be shown off from the output devices. That is another operation performed by the computer system. Lastly, there's a storage. So before data is processed and after data has been processed and is supposed to be displayed out, it has to be kept in the storage devices, which we're going to identify later. In illustration of inputting and outputting of data, of well, that pictorial, we are assuming that is data that is coming in from the end user, which is you and me, typing from a keyboard or a mouse, okay, or pressing on the screen if you're using a touch screen. That is an input. And then once that data is inputted in, it has to be processed, okay, because it's raw information. A computer system cannot make decision based on raw information. It has to process it first of all. Are we together? So once we process that data, the next thing that we're going to do basically is to store that data. Have you seen we've introduced the storage in between the processing stage? So there's, we're going to explain what store are we talking about of this data? How is it done, okay? As the processor is processing the data, working on the data, there's a, an aspect of storage of that data. So what is storing this data? Is it the hard drive? Is it the RAM, okay? So here we're basically talking about the main memory referred to as RAM, okay? So the RAM is the one that is basically storing the data that is going to be processed and that has been processed by the microprocessor. And then the other thing that we basically have there, after a process, we're basically now outputting the data. That is a simple illustration on how a computer system operates and what it does, okay? So inputting, processing and storing, and then outputting data. Now, I'm sure you are aware of these two terms, data and information. In computers, when we refer to data, what do we mean? Do we simply talk about letters, alphabet codes, or numbers, or what? What do we mean when we're talking about data? In computer, data is basically a collection of raw facts, figures, and symbols, such as numbers, words, <coughs> images, videos, sound, and other multimedia files, are we together? That is the data we're talking about. So when you're typing a word document or the actual app that you have opened to type a word document, that is data itself. So the other term of data in computer terms is referred to as an instruction. It's an instruction or program, are we together? An instruction, program, or software, it's one and the same thing, it's data, okay? An instruction, program, or software is also referred to as data. Now, these particular things, when they, when they are collected by the computer system, these facts, figures, and symbols, and words, and videos, when they are collected by the computer system, they have to be manipulated, okay? So we have, we have to manipulate them and create information. That is meaning, okay? Data that is organized and meaningful and useful. Okay, now what is this data? I gave you an illustration of what we're just doing uh, earlier. We're trying to join in to this Zoom link. What we did was to click on the Zoom link, is it? When we're doing that, the computer system, whichever device that we're using, whether keyboard, I mean, whichever device that you're using, whether it's a mobile phone or your laptop or desktop machine, that was an instruction to a computer system. 
that was data to a computer system. Now, what it needed to do after that, immediately you clicked on the link, the computer system worked on that instruction or processed that instruction. And then it detected to say, this instruction is supposed to be displayed with the help of what? So it instructed the monitor to display the result on the screen by opening up Zoom. And hence you're seeing what you're seeing now on the screen, All right? That is a simple illustration of what we see. So whatever we are seeing now on our screen, which is the monitor, is the information that has been processed because that's a result that we're trying to see, okay? Now, what makes a computer system doing all these things? What makes it so powerful as a tool? Because a computer system is a tool that isn't our work. Are we together? At our workplaces, at our homes, where we are seated, we are using computers. We are not meeting physically. We are using this tool. And what's, what makes it so powerful? We have to identify those key things. If I may ask, before we go and identify what makes a computer to be so powerful, do you think a mobile phone is a computer from that definition you gave? This one is an open question. You can answer. Do you think a mobile phone is a computer? Yes. Justification? Justify why we say yes. Uh, it also processes uh, information. Mm -hmm. uh, provided, yes, provided you have uh, commanded it. Definitely, definitely. Thank you very much for that answer. Thank you. Who, who else thinks a, co a mobile phone is a computer? based on the definition we've given, or in addition to what our colleague has just mentioned. Who else? Madam Daka there. Madam Daka, I can see you. Yeah. Do you think, kindly unmute the mic. So it is a computer system, just like our previous colleague was mentioning. It is a computer system in a sense that it's able to import. In fact, it's able to accept data. It's able to process this data. It's able to store this data. So it is a computer system. So remember, let's mute our mics. Remember to mute our mics. Now, the other question I have. question I have is, do you think a calculator is a computer? That is an open question. Colleagues, do you think a calculator is a computer? Yes, please, Mr. Morris. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Nsama. Yes, yes, yes. A, a calculator is a computer also. Okay. Because I say so. Because it's, it is able to, to allow the user to input, for example, one plus one mm -hmm. on the buttons, one plus one, then it will calculate and give out an output, which will be two. <coughs> which will be able to see on its screen. So I would say it is a computer. 
Definitely, definitely. Thank you for that answer. It is, it is a computer, just like we have seen and what we have read from our colleague, because it's able to input, process the values of the uh, arithmetic you're trying to perform, and then produce you the result through that screen, is it? Actually, one thing we so, didn't know is this. One thing we didn't realize is this. The word computer comes from the word compute. The word computer comes with the word compute. And what that means is that a computer system, its whole job, why it was created or designed or invented, is that it should be able to compute numbers. Have you seen that? Should be able to manipulate numbers. Should be able to perform arithmetic operations, plus division, multiplication, and other logical operations, okay? So why is now a computer more powerful as before? Because then, way back, a computer was invented as a calculator. If you're going to look at the history of computers, which we are going to read later on, I'll give you that as supplementary work. You should study about the history of computers at your own free time. You observe to say from generation one to the current generation of machines, this is gen seven of machines. You observe to say from then a, com a computer system was designed to only calculate numbers. In fact, it came from one of these logical tools that we had known as the uppercase. Okay. So you observe from the generation of the uppercase all the way to date. You will see the trend as to how the change has become. So what makes it so powerful is that the computer system now is the computer system now has the ability to perform information processing cycle with amazing speeds. Have you seen that? We are seeing that this particular gadget now is not only able to calculate numbers, but it's able to perform other operations that are more complex, probably at a nanosecond you see, which is a billionth of a second. That makes it so powerful. The other reason is that it has the ability for low failure rate. A computer system, we all know to say that a computer system now, we are sure to say that if I put data in my computer system for it to come and crash or for this data to get lost, ah, there has to be something that has happened externally or in general, maybe there may be a fault, which are on layer occasions, not so. Hence we are saying low failure rate. The other point, accuracy. Because a computer system is an electronic device, so hence all operations performed by it are programmed, are we together? There are a set of well-organized instructions which have to be repeated, redone. Hence, they're accurate. And for these instructions, they cannot be altered that easily. So it will perform them at an accurate level. When we have said that this particular software that we're installing in a computer system, its whole job is to calculate two numbers, then it's going to be doing that and it will produce exactly to your equation that you have embedded in there. Hence that same accurate. What is the other reason as to why computers are now powerful? It has the ability to store huge amounts of data and information. Look at this. This data that we input in, these instructions that we input in, we are now able to see that the computer system is capable of storing a huge amount of data from one byte all the way to megas, kilos, not so gigas, teras, and gigabytes of data. So we are seeing that the amount is now increasing of data storage. Not so, as compared to our normal file systems. The other reason as to why computers are powerful is that 
it has the ability to communicate with other computers, networking, like we are doing now. Have you seen that? It has made our lives easier. You know so? It's because of computers. We're able to have classes virtually because all our devices are connected together with the help of a network. Okay? And this network is coming from different sources and hence creating what we have, which is internet. So with the help of this bigger network called internet, we're able to share information to and from one another. It makes it easier for communication. Great. Now that we understand why computers are powerful of today, how does a computer know what to do? We have to understand that because this is an electronic device. So it's not going to work on its own. It has to be given an instruction for it to perform. Are we together? So how does it know what to do? A computer system has to be given an instruction and these instructions are often referred to as computer programs or softwares. Right now, you're using one of the instructions that you have given it to access this virtual class, which is Zoom. Are we together? So that software that you're using is a Zoom software and it's an instruction behind the scene, okay? So before any job is done in a computer system, there has to be a computer program that will contain the instruction needed to execute the job. Are we together? Now, this gives me an opportunity, you and me, in our next class to come and look at something known as software or computer program. If we don't have any questions, we're going to end our class for today here. Unless we have questions,